Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School, January 23, 2022. Second quarter, lesson number eight. Justice, Judges, and Priests. The background scripture is from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, chapter 17, and chapter 19. The Sunday School material that we are using is the Standard Lesson Commentary 2021-2022. Let's start with a prayer. Lord, we will be st studying uh, judges and priests. We will uh, see what are supposed to be the characteristics and attributes of uh, these judges and priests. Guide us and help us in our Sunday school lesson. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so here at a glance, we are in the second quarter. And second quarter is for the months of the December, January, February. The same justice, law, history. Those will be the topics for third quarter, God frees and redeems. Fourth quarter, partners in a new creation. A quarter at a glance. In this quarter, we look at Old Testament passages that reveal God's desire for justice to characterize human relationship. Makikita natin mula sa Old Testament kung ano ang gusto ng Diyos, anong katarungan, ano ang dapat na mga batas na sundin ng tao para sa maayos na pagsasama. Unit 1, that was for the December, God requires justice, we are through with that. We are now in Unit 2, God the source of justice. And in this unit, which is for the month of January, we will see the uh, result, the ramification for this justice, if applied. We are reminded that God's justice is for our own well-being. And these are the uh, topics for for the unit two, we are now in lesson number eight. In uh, lesson number seven, that was last Sunday, we look into the concrete application of how we love our neighbor. And also, we saw in that lesson that the, no, the seventh day should be a rest day. And the reason given was so that other members of the household will, so, will also have time to rest. Hindi lamang yung padre di pamilya, yung asawa ng padre di pamilya, yung anak ng padre di pamilya ang may karapatan na magpahinga. Sabi doon, other households, there should be no work on the seventh day so that other members of the household will have time to rest. Sino yung other members na to ng household? Yung slaves, yung mga strangers na nagtatrabaho, kasama na yung mga animal na nagtatrabaho, they also have a right to rest. And today, we will be looking at the judges and priests. Unit 3, that will be for the month of February, the same justice and adversity. And we will note that there are four lessons in the month of February. Those are, those are the lessons. So, we will have a total of 13 lessons for this quarter. Now, let's see and read the passage. 
from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 18 to 20. Verse 18, appoint judges and officials for each of your tribes in every town the Lord your God is giving you, and they shall judge the people fairly. Humirang kayo ng mga hukum at ng iba pang pamunuan para sa inyo-inyong bayan. Ayon sa kanya-kanyang angkan, sila ang mamamahala sa inyo at magagawad ng katarungan. Verse 19, Do not pervert justice or show partiality. Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the innocent. Huwag ninyong pipilipitin ang katarungan at huwag kayong magtatangi ng tao ni tatanggap ng suhol pagkat ang suhol ay bumubulag sa matatalino at nagpapahamak sa mga taong matuwid. Follow justice and justice alone so that you may live and possess the hand the land the Lord your God is giving you. Ang katarungan lamang ang inyong pairalin at kayo'y mabubuhay ng matagal sa lupaing ibibigay sa inyo ni Yahweh. If cases come before your courts that are too difficult for you to judge, whether bloodshed, lawsuits, or assaults, take them to the place the Lord your God will choose. Kung sa puok ninyo ay may mabigat na usapin at hindi ninyo kayang lutasin, tulad ng patayan, pang-aapi o pananakit, dalhin ninyo sa lugar na pinili ni Yahweh. Go to the Levitical priests and to the judge who is in the office at that time. Inquire of them and they will give you the verdict. Iharap ninyo ito sa mga libita o hukom na nanunungkulan sa panahong yaon at sila ang hahatol. You must act according to the decisions they give you at the place the Lord will choose. Be careful to do everything they instruct you to do. Tanggapin ninyo ang anumang ihatol nila sa inyo at sunding lahat. Act according to whatever they teach you and the decisions they give you. Do not turn aside from what they tell you to the right or to the left. Kung ano ang sabi nila, siya ninyong gagawin. Huwag kayong lalabag sa anumang itatagubilin nila sa inyo. Anyone who shows contempt for the judge or for the priest who stands ministering there to the Lord your God is to be put to death. You must purge the evil from Israel. Papatayin ang sinumang hindi susunod sa turo ng saserdote o sa hatol ng hukom. Huwag ninyong pahihintulutan ang gayong kasamaan sa inyong kapulungan. All the people will hear and be afraid and will not be content Tempts again. Kapag ito'y nabalita ng lahat, matatakot na silang gumawa ng gayon. Okay? Okay, key text is from Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 18. Appoint judges and officials for each of your tribes in every town the Lord your God is giving you, and they shall judge the people fairly. What is our aim? The aim, each learner will be able to, one, identify the type or types of justice at hand. Ano mga klaseng uh, uh, katarungan? Ang mga makikita natin dito, mamaya. Verse, uh, number two, contrast characteristics of just judges and the rulings with those of unjust judges. Ihambing ang mga katangian ng mga just judges dun sa mga unjust judges. Anong klase? Ano ang mga rulings ng bawat isa? Dapat ihambing natin. 
create a list of go-to advisors for challenging situations. Ito naman, lista natin kung sino yung mga pwede nating lapitan sa mga panahon na may mga problema, may hirap na problema. Gumawa tayo ng listahan kung sino yung pwede nating lapitan upang humingi tayo ng advice. Okay, lesson outline, introduction, the title is The Journey to Judgeship, and lesson context. Chapter 16 of Deuteronomy is about the general goals. Roman numeral number 2, which is Deuteronomy chapter 17, is specific challenges. Then the conclusion, Operation Grey Lord Revisited. Yan, yan ang ating uh, outline. We will cover all this in the duration of our Sunday school. Okay, introduction. The journey to judgeship. <laughs> Papaano ba maging isang hukum? The journey to judgeship. Becoming a judge is a rigorous and demanding process. Yan, para maging isang hukum, mahabang panahon, very demanding. It includes specialized postgraduate education at law school to earn a degree, JD degree, Juris Doctor degree. Sa setting ito sa Amerika, no? pero pareho rin dito sa Pilipinas yan. They have to pass the bar exam. Bar exam. And they should have uh, experience. Dapat nag-practice sila ng law as prosecutor or as a defense lawyer doon sa korte. Maraming mga requirement para maging isang hukum. Di ba? The entire process often takes decades. Maramatagal. The education, training, and experience are necessary foundation needed to render right judgment based on law. Kinakailangan talaga niyan, education na to, itong training, itong experience, itong exposure, ito ay kailangan para saan? Para makapagbigay ng tamang desisyon ayon sa batas. Becoming a judge in the Old Testament Israel was radically different from the process required nowadays. Magkaiba daw, kasi ang, ang lesson natin is uh, the Old Testament. Eh, itong itong pinag-aaralan natin ay it was written, given by God 34 centuries ago, 3,400 years ago. Meron na ito. But sabi dyan, a necessary element Remains the same. Meron din, meron pa rin mga karakteristics na hinihingi. No, kahit na noong araw. Tignan natin. Moses himself appointed the first judge. Yan, si Moses. Siyang nag-appoint the first judge. Ano bang istorya kasi nito? Eh, just imagine. How many people were freed from bondage from Egypt? 600,000 men. Sabi ng mga commentary, that is equivalent to 2.5 million people. Kasama yung women and children. At itong si Moses, naubos ng oras niya sa lahat ng problema, dinadala sa kanya, naubos na yung problema niya. Sa sabi ng father in niya, ang father in niya si Jethro. Sabi niya, hindi ganyan. I-delegate mo yung trabaho. So, Moses chose able men out of all Israel. So, pumili siya. Ang able man, diniligate niya ang trabaho. Rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Pumili siya. Ito ngayon yung mga judges. Pero there was a certain kind of bar exam that individual had to pass before being appointed. Meron ding mga requirement. At naapat yung requirement, characteristics, Criteria para mapili. Number one, capability. Number two, fear of God. Number three, trustworthiness. 
Number four, hatred of dishonest gain. Yan dapat eh, present yan sa, sa pipili niya. Tingnan nga natin yan, itong 1821, Exodus 1821. Ano sabi? Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all people able men such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness. Yun yung apat na requirement para piliin na maging judge. The focus of the book of Exodus is on the first generation of the new nation. Take note, Exodus, sabi dyan, well, Exodus, uh, that was long time ago, before Deuteronomy, but ang pinag-aaralan natin ay Deuteronomy. Ba, ang sinasabi dito, the, the first, this, this laws were first uh, given to the first generation that came out of Egypt. Pero nawala na silang lahat. Forty years had passed. The, you rem, we, we remember this story. Uh, God was very disappointed with the Israelites that they sent, that he sent them back to, to uh, the desert. And for 40 years, they were there. And all the men died. This is now the second generation. The new generation of Israel needed to hear the law expounded. That is why from Exodus, sinabi na yan, ini-expound ulit dito sa Deuteronomy. And the audience is now different because the first audience, namatay na silang lahat. Diba? Ito na lang, yung second audience. This included reiterating the characteristics of a proper proper judicial system in general and requirement of judges in particular. Kasama, kasama doon sa mga batas na yon, yung mga kung papano ang proper judicial system in general at kung sino, ano ang characteristics ng mga hukum na pipiliin. This week's lesson comes from a portion of Deuteronomy where Moses spoke on various leadership positions and how they were to function. Ano yung mga yan? yan from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 16 and chapter 17, which is our lesson for today, it is about judges. Uh, still in uh, verse 17, kings. Uh, chapter 17, king. Chapter 18, priests. And also chapter 18, prophets. Yan yung mga coverage. Today's lesson will illustrate how the Lord demands just judgment and desires His covenant people to be led by individuals who exhibit the ability to practice just judgment among them. Hinihiling, hinihingi ng Diyos. Kailangan ang mga desisyon ay fair and just. Kailangan ang mga namumuno ay they have the ability and they must be fair in their judgment. Okay. Now we go to the scripture. Roman numeral number one, general goal, letter A, responsible people. We look at the people who are going to be appointed as judge. Verse 18, appoint judges and officials for each of your tribes in every town the Lord your God is giving you and they shall judge the people fairly. Okay. Judges, officials, and the word fairly. I underline that because that will be how we will discuss this verse. The judges were those leaders tasked with exacting decision of justice for the people. These individuals were considered leaders of the community and was such were mentioned alongside the priests. Officials, you know, among officials, they serve the people of Israel in a different fashion than judges. Bukod yung judges, bukod yung officials. Ito ay mga tumutulong sa mga, ofici- sa mga judges. These individuals assisted the judges in providing leadership and just decision making for the people of God that they presented themselves before God. Tumutulong sila sa decision making. The word fair, the Hebrew word rendered fair can also be mean righteous, righteous, 
Ayun, yung Hebrew word kanina. And they will judge fairly. But yung fairly can also, be, can also mean righteous. It is the idea of right relationship with God as well as right and fair relationship with other human. Yung term na righteous, yun yung ibig sabihin, it is a right relationship with God and fair relationship with other humans. And take note that this is not only a theoretical word, fairly righteous. No, it must be exhibited in tangible acts. Sa araw-araw na pamumuhay, nakikita yan dapat. Tangible acts of following the just laws that God has set forth. Legal proceedings often took place at the gates of every town. This case served as the center of the town's public life and constituted, constituted the loca- location where significant administrative and legal decisions were made. Uh, Diyan daw yung lugar, dun sa Israel, dyan daw yung lugar na kung saan na ginagawa itong mga public hearing nito. Saan? Dun sa gates. The town's public life. Dun sa gates. Gates of every town. Doon sila nagpupulong-pulong. And here are some scriptures. Let's read one. Uh, let's see, 1 Kings 22. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. Ayun, no? the, the king of the southern tribe and the king of the the king of the northern tribe and the king of the southern tribe king of Israel king of Judah nandun sila sa Samaria doon sa gate of the town why? they have to make a very important decision well yung istorya kasi nito they, uh, they, they are going to decide whether to go to war or not that was the issue here And so, they are there. The gate of Samaria. Doon sila sa gate of Samaria nagpupulong. Because that is the place where decisions are made. Ah, ito naman. Uh, this is a, the story by uh, the author of our Sunday School lesson. Ang term niya ay the fair judge. Illustration. Illustration. My brother and I are as different. Uh, story ito ng magkapatid. Dalawang lalaki, hindi sila nagkakasundo, lagi nag-aaway. Nagsusuntukan. Madalas hindi nagkakasundo. So, they seek an authority, an authority figure. Kinakailangan nila ng authority figure. Sino yung madalas na authority figure? Yung father. At yung decision ng father, nag-aagree sila. Why? We agreed to his decision because he is good and trustworthy judge. Yun ang tingin nila sa father nila. Their father is good and trustworthy judge. And he is bound to impartiality by his love for both of his sons. Parehas niyang mahal yung dalawa. So, tinatanggap nila yung decision. For the nation of Israel, niyaha rin tulad naman niya sa Israel. Yung dalawang bata na nag-aaway, kailangan nila ng isang authority. Ang sino yung authority? Yung tatay. Naniniwala sila doon sa tatay. Yung decision ng tatay, bakit? Well, pareho silang mahal eh. So, okay. Tama. Now, inaahalin tulad dyan sa Israel. In matters too difficult to settle, the involved parties appeared before the priest and the judge. Doon sila pumupunta sa, pa, sa priest and judge. And these leaders provided fair and just ruling. They gave voice to God's people of God's desire for just and fair treatment. The nation of Israel, they go to the priest and the judge, and they believe and they abide with the ruling of the priest and judge. Why? Because they know that they are people of God. They know that they, pre- they represent what God's desire is for just and fair treatment. Still in Roman numeral number one, this time we go to 
reliable principles. Reliable principles. Ano yung mga prinsipyo nitong hukub na ito? 19A. Do not pervert justice. Yan. Yung pervert, ibig sabihin niyan, maling pakahulugan. Bigyan, wag bigyan ng maling pakahulugan. Do not pervert justice. To pervert refers to the act of twisting, skewing, withholding, or distorting. In this case, it affects one's ability to practice right and fair justice. Ano yung reliable principle? 19A, do not pervert justice. Anong ibig sabihin niyan? Eh, twisting, binabaluktot, winiwidol, hindi nilalabas. Ah, yung, yung mga katotohanan. Pag nangyari ito, yung judge, the judge's ability to give a fair, and a fair judgment will be affected. The act of perverting justice was quite concerning for the needy individuals in the land, especially the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow. Eh, sinasabi dyan, lalong-lalo na itong mga hinaharas, itong ginagimita ng mga ganito, ay yung mga tao na mababa, the marginalized people, the needy. Ha? Sino yung mga yan? Yung mga estranghero, mga dayuhan, sino pa? Yung mga fatherless, eh, walang mga magulang, sino pa? Walang asawa. 19B, or show partiality. Another reliable principle. Huwag papanig, huwag pagkikilingan, huwag kakampihan. Uh, partial eh. eh. Masyadong bias, etc. etc. Administrators of justice were not to show undue partiality based on the social standing. Uh, eh, hindi porki kilala sa lipunan, eh, papanigan na ng judge. No. Scripture declares that all people are equal before God and therefore he does not show partiality or favoritism. Dahil yung judge, he is representing God's desire. And God's desire, from the point of view of God, all people are equal before God. Therefore, there should be no partiality. Kahit na mahirap ka, kahit na hindi ka Israelita, kahit na strong hero ka lang, the, dapat the principle, walang dapat kikilingan ang judge. Then, Peter, uh, ito yung isang example going to the going to the New Testament with regards to this. Yung uh, walang itinatangi. Acts 10.34 Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of person. Hindi kumikilang ang Diyos kanino man. Nang ibig sabihin yan, walang itinatangi ang Diyos. Walang itinatangi ang Diyos. This is 35, 3400 years before sinulat ni Moses but we see that later on in the New Testament in the book of Acts, pareho. Ang Diyos ay walang kinikilingan. Still on verse 19. Now, 19c. Do not accept a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twist the words of the innocent. Ayan. Suhol. Bakit? Ang suhol ay binubulag yung mata ng matatalino. Binabaluktot yung salita ng mga inosente. Ito ang mga dapat na prinsipyo ng isang judge. Bribes and influencing gifts distorted leaders' ability to judge rightly in the manner God required. Yeah, mga, uh, mga regalo, bawal yan. Suhol din yan eh. Bakit? Because hindi na kayang mumawa ng desisyon ang isang judge ayon sa gusto ng Diyos. In the manner God required. When this occurred, justice became a commodity that could be bought and sold. Such individuals were called wicked as they pervert the course of justice. Yung mga tumatanggap ng bribe, yung mga tumatanggap ng regalo, ng mga hukom, ang tawag sila nila kay wicked. Bakit? 
binabaluktot nila, nawawala ang justisya. Verse 20, still on reliable principle. Follow justice and justice alone. Yan, in-underlinean ko yun. Justice and justice alone. Inimpasays talaga. So that you may lead and possess the land the Lord your God is giving you. Yun yung requirement. Ano yung requirement? Justice and justice alone. Ano ang mangyayari? Para ma- manatili sila doon sa promised land na ibibigay sa kanila ng Diyos. Take note, papasok pa lang sila doon sa, sa promised land itong panahon na to. Papasok pa lang sila sa promised land. At sasakupin nila at ang sabi ng Diyos, Justice and justice alone. Follow justice and justice alone. Bakit? Para hindi sila palayasin sa promised land. Repetition of a single word in this manner signifies the words magnitude and its importance for the reader or hearer. As a result, complete and absolute justice with no compromise must be the passion for all God's people. Complete and absolute justice with no compromise. Wala nang tanong-tanong, walang, walang alibay, walang palusot. As Israel and its leaders made effort to follow the just living that, ju- that God required, a positive consequence would be their continued residence in the land given to them by God. Yun yung positive consequence. What is the positive consequence? Oh, following the law of God, being obedient to the law of God, mananatili sila doon sa promised land. We know what happened. Later on, hundreds of years later, they were kicked out from the promised land. First, yung southern tribe, uh, northern tribe, and then the southern tribe, they were kicked out. Why? Because of disobedience to the law of God. Their ability to live in the possess, their ability to live in and possess the promised land had nothing to do with their own virtue. It was a matter of making the Lord's priorities their priorities. Hindi dahil malakas sila, hindi dahil sa marami sila, hindi dahil sa marunong sila, kaya mananatili sa promised land. No! That is not. It will be Making Lord's priorities their priorities. Yun, yun yung formula. Ano yung formula? Sundin ang gusto ng Diyos, gawin ang gusto ng Diyos. Yun ang formula. Hindi yung palakasin ang kanilang army, ha, ha, mag-training ng gusto, paramihin, etc. No, it's not. Roman numeral number two. Specific challenges. Letter A, difficult instances. Ah, ito naman. We are now in chapter 17. Difficult instances. If cases come before your courts that are too difficult for you to judge, whether bloodshed, lawsuits, or assaults, take them to the place the Lord your God will choose. Yan. May mga korte, di ba kanina? May mga hukom para sa isang libo, sa isandaan, sa singkwenta, sa sampo, magmahirap, sabi dyan, eh, dalhin ninyo dun sa judge. Saan? Dun sa lugar na ituturo ng Diyos, na pinili ng Diyos. The use of yo refers to local judges. Kanina, di siguro lower court, parang ganun, di ba? And they were unable to resolve. Such cases often involve an intent to kill, yan, bloodshed, legal claims, lawsuit, or physical injury. Yan yung mga cases na dadalhin doon sa taas. In this situation, the involved parties were to take them to a location chosen by God. Ano yung location na yun? This place was mentioned previously in a more detail as a place of sacredness. Ah, yun yung lugar na Sacred, a place where the Lord would put His name, 
A place where the Lord would put His name. Tignan nga natin yan in Deuteronomy. In that place, in what became a central sanctuary, the Israelites offered their sacrifices, tithes, special gifts, vows. This location served Israel not only for its legal needs, but also for its sacred and ceremonial needs. Eh, talagang sagrado, sacred. Why? This is where they give their sacrifices, their tithes, special gifts, vows. Doon nila dadalin. So therefore, the location is sacred. And it makes the people sacred. And it makes the decision of the people, or the, the decision of the priest and the judge, sacred. Because this is a place of God. Yun ang ibig sabihin niyan. Doon dadalhin. Go to the Levitical priest and to the judge who is in office at that time. Inquire of them and they will give you the verdict. Yeah. Levitical priest. Ito mga Levites. Tingnan nga natin yung discussion ng Levites dito. Priests were Levites. Yun yung mga priests eh. Levites. Members of the tribe of Levi. These individuals guided the religious practice of Israel by officiating at times of worship, teaching the stipulation of the law of Moses. Ayan ang mga Levites, big time. Big time itong mga Levites ito. Ayan yung mga pare. At sila yung nagtuturo ng batas. Sila yung nagtuturo ng batas. Teaching the stipulation of the law. Take note, yung mga, yung mga Levites, wala silang uh, inheritance na lupa. Eh. Binibigyan sila ng bawat, uh, ng bawat tribe. Pero walang separate na tribe para, uh, na lupa para sa Levites. And guiding proper actions. Ah, yun pala. Uh, officiating times of worship, teaching, teaching the stipulation of the law, tapos, guiding proper actions of life even as related to health within the community of God, people. Unlike other tribes of Israel, Levites own no land but live on properties donated by the Israelites. The involvement of religious leaders with seemingly non-religious judicial cases might seem inappropriate from a modern perspective. However, Old Testament Israel had the singular responsibility to follow God's law in every realm of life. Sinasabi dyan, sa panahon natin, eh, merong separation of church and state. Yung tinatawag na separation of church and state. Iba. Iba yung reliyon. Iba yung uh, sa simbahan. Sa simbahan. Pero not in the, in the olden time of Israel. Why? Sabi dyan, the Old Testament had singular responsibility to follow God's law in every realm of life. Walang separation ng araw. Lahat, lahat, lahat under sa Diyos. Under lahat sa Levites. Under lahat. Wala yung the separation of the uh, uh, state and the church. Wala yan ng araw. Because of the all-encompassing nature of their covenant relationship with God, there was no distinction between sacred and secular. The Levitical priests and the judge made their verdict based on, the understanding, on their understanding of civil and criminal law, thereby acting as leaders of God's covenant people. Lahat ay ayon sa turo ng Diyos. Lahat yun, doon nila doon nila ginagampanan. Doon nila binabasi ang lahat ng kanilang desisyon. Verse 10. Still on difficult instances. You must act according to the decision they give you at the place the Lord will choose. Be careful to do everything they instruct you to do. Yan. Ito naman ang instruction doon sa mga nagpunta doon. Dinulong nila doon sa, sa pare. Sa mga libay, yung problema nila, pagka naibigay na yung decision, you must act according to the decision. Take note, a while ago, they, uh, we discussed the location, di ba? 
the location is sacred, the people are sacred, therefore the decision is sacred because everything is of God. Their decision was final. The reminder that their verdict occurred in the place the Lord will choose and enforces sacredness of that location and therefore the decision made there. Pareho, sacred yung location, therefore sacred yung decision. Therefore, absolute dapat sundin. Verse 11, act according to whatever they teach you and the decision they give you. Do not turn aside from what they tell you to the right or to the left. It is a continuation of verse 10. Sinasabi dyan, sundin ninyo yung desisyon. Walang uh, alibay, walang palusot. Don't turn to the left, don't turn to the right. It's strict obedience. Moses emphasized strict obedience to what the Levites and the judges teach and the decisions they give. All parties involved were not to deviate from the decision rendered. The appointed council prepared hearers for a solemn warning. <laughs> Ito, malupit itong pagkakasabi nito. Bakit? Eh, merong solemn warning if they fail to adhere to Moses' guideline. Ano kaya yung warning na yan na susunod? Anyone, verse 12, anyone who shows contempt for the judge, yung hindi magre-respeto doon sa desisyon, or for the priest who stands ministering there to the Lord your God, is to be put to death. Yan yung uh, malupit. Di ba? Lahat ng hindi susunod doon sa desisyon, anong sabi dyan? Death. You must purge the evil from Israel. <laughs> Dapat lahat sumunod. Bakit? Alam nyo yan, sabi niya, pag hindi nyo yan sinunod, eh, magiging deterioration ma kakalat yung balita pwede naman palang hindi sundin eh yan ang sinasabi you must purge the evil from Israel wag ninyong it, wag ninyong uh, itulok wag ninyong uh, 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 itulok ano yung itulok sa Tagalog uh, wag uh, pahintulutan wag ninyong uh, pahintulutan na merong hindi hindi susunod yung hindi susunod patayin bakit? para hindi tularan the Hebrew word behind this term describes an individual acting out of pride or haughtiness. Yun daw, yun daw yung mga individual na hindi sumusunod. Ha? Pride and haughtiness. Yung haughtiness is pagmamataas, haughtiness of heart. Mataas ang tingin sa sarili. Israel's law describes other instances that necessitated capital punishment. Yeah, ito pa yung mga other capital punishment. So bukod dyan, Capital punishment, dahil death eh. Bunod dyan, among others, ano ba yung mga capital punishment? Rebellion against God. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 5. Death yan. False prophet. Mga false prophet, capital punishment yan. Chapter 18, 22 to 22. Insubordinate family member. Pati yung insubordinate family member, oh. capital punishment. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 18 to 21. In these instances, the primary concern was that the people of God maintained holiness in their covenant relationship and that evil no longer polluted the covenanted people. Yun. Deterrence. Deterrence. Para maiwasan. Para hindi mapollute. Verse 13. All the people will hear and be afraid and will not be contemptuous again. Yan. Para maniwala ang tao. The harsh actions of the previous verse were revealed to have another, more communal function as a deterrent to any further contemptuous behavior. God required that his people live justly. He had strong consequences for those who refused to live in that manner or who distracted others from that same quest for justice. Strong consequences for those who refuse, yung individual na ayaw, sumunod, strong consequences, death, or yung mga they distract others from the same quest. Yeah? 
death din yan. At times, the innocent were punished and the guilty went free as in the case of neighbors by yard. When such condition as this exists within a society, it is not long before people become accustomed to calling evil good and good evil. Justice, according to God's standard, becomes harder and harder to find in such a morally corrupt environment. Pagka nangyari yan, pinababayaan yung mga corrupt, nakikita natin lalong uh, uh, mas maganda ang pamumuhay, humihirap ang buhay. Diba? That is the case of Naboth. Alam natin yung istorya ni Naboth, di ba? Uh, Naboth, King Ahab, dami siyang lupa. Tapos nakita niya yung lupa nung uh, kapitbahay niya. Si Naboth, ayaw naman ibenta sa kanya. Ginawa nung asawa niya, gumawa siya ng style, sistema. Ha? The end result, pinatay si Naboth. Kinuha ni King Ahab yung lupa ni Naboth. Conclusion, Operation Grey Lord Revisited. Yan. Ano ba tong Operation Grey Lord? The 14-year period was bittersweet for American judicial system. 14 years. 14 years yung kaso nitong uh, Operation Grey Lord. Ano ba yan? Grey Lord was the name of the undercover FBI investigation into alleged corruption in the judicial system in Cook Country, Illinois. Merong investigation, FBI investigation, and it took them 14 years. Ano yung iniimbestigahan? Alleged corruption in the judicial system. 14 years. Yan sabi dyan, bittersweet. Ano yung bittersweet? Eh, bitter. Sweet. <laughs> bitter. Pait. The part was that the allegation proved to be true. Yun. Bakit mapait? Napatunayan na totoo. Fifteen judges were convicted of bribery, mail fraud, racketeering, income tax violation, etc. Marami pang iba. Fifteen judges convicted. And dozens of others, including lawyers, deputy sheriffs, policemen, and court officials were also convicted. Yun yung bitter. Kaya bitter sweet. Bakit? Napatunayan. Operation Grey Lord, totoo. Totoo yung, yung mga allegation. Hindi na allegation. Napatunayan. Sweet. Yeah, bitter sweet. The sweet part was that an accountability existed to expose and correct such corruption. Despite that, we will never know how far and to whom the ripple effects of the corruption extended. You know, sweet now is, there is a system in place. There is a system in place to expose and to correct yung nangyari. Work toward a just system begins by acknowledging the need for four distinct kinds of justice. Ah, merong four distinct kinds of justice. Ano-ano ito? Distributive justice. Ano yung distributive justice? To ensure economic fairness. Distributive justice to e- e- ensure economic fairness. Tingnan natin ang example dito. From Deuteronomy 24, to 14 to 15. Thou shalt not oppress an hired servant that is poor and needy. Yun, yung uh, mahirap lang, na needy. Whether he be my day brethren, stretcher, at his day thou shalt give him his hire. Yun yung fairness. Ha? Pagkatapos magtrabaho sa iyo, mahirap lang yan, poor lang yan. Pagkatapos niya magtrabaho, anong gagawin mo? Ibigay mo ang sweldo. Fairness. Ha? Distributive justice to ensure economic fairness. Example, yung mga trabahador mo, sweldo mo ng tama. Number two, restorative justice to require restitution by an offender. Yung pangalawang justice na binabanggit dito, restorative, to restore. Restorative justice to require restitution by an offender. Oh, to restore, restore. Eh, tingnan natin ulit yung isang example nyo rito. If a man shall steal, pag nanakaw, ninakaw yung ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, 
He shall restore five oxen for an ox. Yan yung batas. Yung nagnakaw eh. Isa yung ninakaw niya, i-restore niya yung ninakaw niya lima bawat isang ox. Apat na sheep bawat isang sheep. Etc. Ang tawag niyan ay restorative justice. To restore. Yung to, re- to require restitution. Number three, retributive justice. To punish. Ah, punishment naman ito. Retribution. Punishment offenders because they deserve Retrib- retributive justice. Ito naman yung retribute. May punishment. Retribution. Let us see another example here. Deuteronomy chapter 25. It shall, and it shall be, if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten, yan, he will be beaten according to his fault by a certain number. E gagano karami ang palo. E depende kung anong klase ang pan ang kanyang kasalanan. Ang sabi dyan ay, if the wicked man be worthy to be beaten. Anong term dito? Retributive justice. Punishment. Retribution. Next, the fourth, procedural justice. Ito naman yung procedural justice. We have a lengthy discussion of this in the, in the uh, last Sunday's lesson. Due process. For ensuring fairness in application of rules by due process. Inyan. So, in all of this, in all of these three, uh, in all of these four, the most important and prerequisite is the procedural justice. The fourth of this is the starting point. The one, the other three depend on as a prerequisite. In all of these three, judges, uh, three justice system, prerequisite is yung fourth, procedural justice. Humans have a duty to work for all four, but our work begins with the fourth. This obligation has been unchanged since today's lesson text was penned. Siyempre lahat, itong tatlong mga judicial system na to, justice na to, type of justice, it all start, start with this fourth, which is the procedural justice. Dapat uh, kasama yan. Palaging prerequisite yan. Our efforts here form part with salt and light that Jesus commanded to us to be. We do so as citizens of the kingdom that is not for this world as we honor the ruler of that heavenly kingdom. Ang sinasabi rito, we are not member of this world. We are member of, we are citizens of the kingdom. And we honor the ruler of that heavenly kingdom. Ang buhay natin dapat sumusunod sa turo ng Diyos, sa utos ng Diyos. Hindi tayo dapat umaayon sa sanlipunan. Whereas previous lessons on justice have examined justice alongside various qualities such as kindness and righteousness, today's lesson considers justice alongside some of those officials who were supposed to administer it in Old Testament Israel, namely judges and priests. No one is exempt from practicing justice. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for our lesson. Thank you for reiterating to us that we have to abide with the justice, your standard of justice, and these are for our own well-being. Help us to truly apply this in our lives so that we will truly be able to abide with your with your command which is to love our neighbor all these justices all these practical applications all of these are concrete applications of how we are to supposed to love our neighbor this is our prayer in Jesus name amen Last slide. Uh, 
Uh, second quarter, lesson nine, justice and the marginalized. We are still in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 24. So, magandang umaga po at pagpalain kayo ng Diyos. Music